Hello, everyone. Welcome to a brand new Read Aloud. We are going to be doing Flat Stanley by Jeff Brown. I'm reading, him, reading this book to you on my iPad because I don't have it here at home. This is the original Flat Stanley. There are several other ones, um, so they're kind of fun. I hope you enjoy it. Um, also, be on the lookout for something in your mail that will go along with this book. Um, I don't want to tell you anything else I wanted to do. Okay, first illustration. I know this is kind of hard to see on the computer. I will do my best. Chapter one, the big bulletin board. Breakfast was ready. I will go wake the boys, Mrs. Lambchop said to her husband, George Lambchop. Just then their younger son, Arthur, called from the bedroom he shared with his brother, Stanley. Hey, come and look, hey. Mr. and Mrs. Lambchop were both very much in favor of politeness and careful speech. A is for horses, Arthur, not people, Mr. Lambchop said as they entered the bedroom. Try to remember that. Excuse me, Arthur said, but look. He pointed to Stanley's bed. Across it lay the enormous bulletin board that Mr. Lambchop had given the boys a Christmas ago so they could pin up pictures and messages and maps. It had fallen during the night on top of Stanley. But Stanley was not hurt. In fact, he would still have been sleeping if he had not been woken by his brother's shout. What's going on here? He called out cheerfully from beneath the enormous board. Mr. and Mrs. Lambchop hurried to lift it from the bed. Heavens, said Mrs. Lambchop. Gosh, said Arthur. Stanley's flat. As a pancake, said Mr. Lambchop. Darndest thing I've ever seen. Let's all have breakfast, Mrs. Lambchop said, Then Stanley and I will go to see Dr. Dan and hear what he has to say. In the office, Dr. Dan examined Stanley all over. How do you feel, he asked. Does it hurt very much? I felt sort of tickly for a while after I got up, Stanley Lambchop said, but I feel fine now. Well, that's mostly how it is with these cases, said Dr. Dan. We'll just have to keep an eye on this young fellow, he said when he had finished the examination. Sometimes we doctors, despite all our years of training and experience, can only marvel at how little we really know. Oops, sorry about that. I closed that out by accident. Let me try that again. There we go. There we go. Mrs. Lambchop said she thought Stanley's clothes would have to be altered by the tailor now, so Dr. Dan told his nurse to take Stanley's measurements. Mrs. Lambchop wrote them down. Stanley was four feet tall, about a foot wide, and a half an inch thick. Chapter 2, Being Flat when Stanley got used to being flat, he enjoyed it. He could go in and out of rooms, even when the door was closed, just by lying down and sliding through the crack at the bottom. Mr. and Mrs. Lambchop said it was silly. They were quite proud of him. Arthur got jealous and tried to slide under the door, but he just banged his head. Being flat could also be helpful, Stanley found. He was taking a walk with Mrs. Lambchop one afternoon when her favorite ring fell from her finger. The ring rolled across the sidewalk and down between the bars of a grating that covered a deep, dark shaft. Mrs. Lambchop began to cry. I have an idea, Stanley said. He took the laces out of his shoes and an extra pair out of his pocket and tied them all together to make one long lace. Then he tied one end to that, to the back of his belt, and gave the other end to his mother. Lower me, he said, and I will look for the ring. Yes. Thank you, Stanley, Mrs. Lambchop said. She lowered him between the bars and moved him carefully up and down and from side to side so that he could search the whole floor of the shaft. Two policemen came by and stared at Mrs. Lambchop as she stood holding the long lace that ran down through the grating. She pretended not to notice them. What's the matter, lady? The first policeman asked. Is your yo-yo stuck? There's Stanley on his string. I am not playing with the yo-yo, Mrs. Lambchop said sharply. My son is at the other end of this lace, if you must know. Get the net, Harry, said the second policeman. We have got a poo-poo. Just then, down in the shaft, Stanley cried, Hooray! Mrs. Lambchop pulled him up and saw that he had the ring. 
Good for you, Stanley, she said. Then she turned angrily to the policeman. A cuckoo, indeed, she said. The policeman apologized. We didn't get it, lady, they said. We have been hasty. We see that now. People should think twice before making rude remarks, said Mrs. Lamptop, and then not make them at all. The policeman realized it was a good rule, and they would try and remember it. There they are again. Stanley has his mom's ring. One day, Stanley got a letter from his friend, Thomas Anthony Jeffrey, whose family had moved recently to California. A school vacation was about to begin, and Stanley was invited to spend it with the Jeffreys. Oh, boy, Stanley said, I would love to go. Mr. Lamchoff sighed. A round-trip tra train or airplane ticket to California is very expensive, he said. I will have to think of some cheaper way. When Mr. Lamchoff came home from the office that evening, he brought with him an enormous brown paper envelope. Hmm. It is with the envelope. Now then, Stanley, he said, try this for size. The envelope fits Stanley very well. There was even room left over, Mrs. Lamchop discovered, for an egg salad sandwich made with thin bread and a toothbrush case filled with milk. They had to put a great many stamps on the envelope to pay for both airmail and insurance, but it was still much less expensive than a train or an airplane ticket to California. The next day, Mr. and Mrs. Lamchop slid Stanley into his envelope, along with the egg salad sandwich and the toothbrush, and the toothbrush case full of milk and mailed him from the box on the corner. The envelope had to be folded to fit through the slot, but Stanley was a limber boy, and inside the box he straightened right up again. There he is with Dad in his envelope. Mrs. Lamchop was nervous because Stanley had never been away from home before. She rapped on the box. Can you hear me, dear? She called. Are you all right? Stanley's voice came quite clearly. I'm fine. Can I eat my sandwich now? Wait an hour and try not to get overheated, dear, Mrs. Lamchop said. Then she and Mr. Lamchop cried out, goodbye, goodbye, and went home. Stanley had a fine time in California. When the visit was over, the Jeffreys returned him in a beautiful white envelope they had made themselves. It had red and blue markings to show that it was airmail, and Thomas Jeffrey had lettered it valuable and fragile and this end up on both sides. Back home, Stanley told his family that he had been handled so carefully he never felt a single bump. Mr. Lamchop said it proved that jet planes were wonderful, and so was the Postal Service, and that this was a great age in which to live. Stanley thought so too.